Handling chemicals safely means following rules designed to keep them from contacting your skin and eyes or someone else's. One important safety rule is always use small containers that you can control easily. Ignoring this rule can cause accidents. If you have an accident, always inform your teacher. Pouring from small containers is far safer. Accidents can also happen when mixing chemicals. Is this okay? Looks fine. You can go ahead and get started. Okay, thank you. To be safe, only mix chemicals when your teacher says to. Read the instructions for the experiment all the way through first, before doing anything. Read and reread labels before use to make sure you've got the right chemicals. Note the concentration and the hazard warning. Accidents can happen when the wrong chemicals are mixed together or when the right chemicals are mixed together in the wrong way. Make sure to follow your instructions exactly. For example, suppose you have to dilute concentrated sulfuric acid with water. You might think you could mix them together any way you wish. But there's an important rule for diluting concentrated sulfuric or phosphoric acid that should always be followed. Add the acid to the water, never the reverse. Remember it by the initials AA, add acid. Watch what happens when you don't follow this rule. This is water added to acid. The acid boils and it can splash out of the beaker. When acid and water are mixed correctly, there's less danger. Acid is poured from a graduated cylinder or beaker down a stirring rod into the water. Whenever you work with chemicals, there's a chance of spills. A work tray under your setup will help contain them. Always move carefully when handling chemicals. Keep coin top stoppers between your fingers, not on the bench where they can pick up contaminants. Hold bottles with your hand over the label and replace stoppers immediately. Covering the label keeps drips from blurring it or getting on your hands. Set bottles out of the way when you're finished so they won't get knocked to the floor. When handling chemicals, always keep them away from your face. Never taste anything to see what it is, and don't touch it or smell it directly from the bottle either. Small amounts of some chemicals, even vapors, can harm your eyes, mouth, and nasal membranes. There's a safe way to smell a chemical indirectly, if your teacher gives you permission. Hold it away from your face and waft the vapors to your nose. That way you won't get a strong whiff of them directly. Certain chemicals give off vapors. They're called volatile chemicals. You should work with harmful volatiles under a fume hood. Your teacher will tell you what these chemicals are. Chemicals should be kept pure and uncontaminated. One way to prevent contamination is to use only clean glassware. Another way is to only pour out of a reagent bottle. Never pour anything back in, even excess chemicals you haven't used. It's better to waste the excess than to risk contaminating the entire bottle with particles from around the lab. After measuring out a reagent, you'll often have something left over. Instead of pouring it back in the reagent bottle, dispose of it in the proper waste container. When drawing out chemicals with a pipette, don't use your mouth. Use a bulb or pipetter. You can collect the exact amount you need and never have to come in contact with it.
At some point in your laboratory work, you'll probably spill something. You should report spills immediately. Stay away from the spilled chemical and let your teacher clean it up. To keep a large spill from spreading, it's barricaded with an absorbent material such as kitty litter. It's then either mopped up or covered over completely with the absorbent. The absorbent and chemical can be swept up with a broom. What's done with the residue depends on the type of chemical it contains. Your lab should have a container for each type of waste. Don't throw waste chemicals down the sink unless your teacher says it's all right. Waste paper that's not contaminated by chemicals goes in a conventional trash can. And broken glassware goes into a separate container. The last chemical handling safety rule to keep in mind is to clean up when finished. Glassware should be thoroughly scrubbed and rinsed so it's as clean as possible for the next experiment. Liquid puddles or powders left behind on a lab bench can get on the next person's clothing or skin. Wipe them up thoroughly and throw the paper towels away in the proper container. And clean chemicals off your hands before leaving. There may be invisible chemical residues that could damage your skin or contaminate your food the next time you eat. Work with small containers. Mix chemicals only when your teacher says to. Read and reread chemical labels. Read instructions all the way through first. Use a work tray if your lab has them. Move carefully and deliberately when handling chemicals. Add concentrated sulfuric or phosphoric acid to water. Hold coin top stoppers between your fingers while pouring. Hold bottles with your hand over the label. Replace stoppers immediately. Keep chemicals away from your face. Work with harmful volatile chemicals under a hood. Keep chemicals as pure and uncontaminated as possible. Draw out chemicals with a pipette filler, never by mouth. Notify your teacher to clean up spills. Put waste in the proper container. Clean up when finished.